Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel. Today we're finally jumping back into the Action Classifier app tutorial. As I mentioned in the previous video, this second part will set up the base necessary to get data from our camera and ready to pass to our classifier. It's definitely the easiest part of the project, but I wanted to keep it separate for those of you that have never used AV Foundation before. So let's jump right into it. We'll obviously start by opening up Xcode and create a new project. We'll pick the default app template and give it whatever name we want. For this project, I'll be using UIKit, so make sure to have Storyboard selected as your interface option and click Next, then Create. The first thing we'll look at is creating a video preview of our camera feed. It's not actually necessary for the purposes of classifying, but it will help us when testing the app to make sure we're in frame and that the vision framework is correctly recognizing us. We'll start by importing AV Foundation, Apple's audio visual framework, and creating an AV capture video preview layer that we'll call preview layer. We'll create a function called setup video preview and call it inside our view did load function so we get everything set up when the app is launched. For now, all we'll do is add a guard statement to make sure our preview layer is initialized. Add it as a sublayer to our view and make it fill out the same frame as our base view, making it stretch across our whole screen. Obviously, you'll have noticed that we're never going to get past this guard statement right now, so let's get things set up so we can hook up our preview layer to some actual data. To manage everything related to AV Foundation, we'll create a video capture object. Head to our project, hit Command, and create a new Swift file, and we'll call it Video Capture. In here again, we'll import AV Foundation and create our video capture class. In there, we'll create an AV capture session, which basically acts as a bridge between our phone's input devices and some output that we'll set up later on. Now that we have that, we'll quickly set some parameters for our capture session. First, creating an AV capture device, which will be the default video camera on our phone for this case. And with that capture device, we can create an AV capture input that will take the data from the device we've specified. Finally, we'll set the session preset, a variable that adjusts the quality level of our data output to high, and add the input we've created to our session. To make sure we don't waste resources when we don't need to, we'll add another function before we're done so we can start running our capture session when we actually decide to. For now, we should be done here. We can head back to our view controller and our current error should now be going away. In our setup preview function, we can now start our capture session with the function we just created and initialize our preview layer using the capture session that was just started. This preview layer will automatically receive the device input we've defined and display it to our view. One final note before we can run and test this, hopefully you've thought about it. Since we'll be using the camera, we have to go ask for users' permissions. We'll open our info.plist and add a new row. Scroll down to privacy camera usage description and give a brief description of why we are using the camera. We can now build and run our app, and we should see a direct video feed of our camera show up and fill up the whole screen. Oh, 
Okay, that's not a bad start, but I'd like to add one last thing to set ourselves up to use our action classifier in the next part of this tutorial. If you look at the code right now, you'll see we haven't given ourselves anywhere to access the data that is being sent by our camera. We've only linked it up to a preview layer, which did all of that behind the scenes. We'll open our video capture back up and create an AV capture video data output. And our initializer will add that output to the same capture session as earlier. Since we won't be managing the memory consumption that would occur if our queue gets backed up, and since none of it is critical, we'll set the parameter always discards late video frames to true, so frames that are received while the queue is already handling another frame are discarded. The last step is to add an entry point for that output within our code. If you're used to iOS, you'll have guessed that we'll now add a delegate that will allow us to do that. We'll call set sample buffer delegate in our start capture session function and use self as the delegate to our video output and create a dispatch queue where the callbacks will be invoked. Xcode will yell at us for a second because video capture doesn't yet confirm to the delegate we need. We can add a video capture extension so it adopts the AV capture video data output sample buffer delegate. Quite a mouthful right there. All we need here is to set the capture output did output sample buffer method and we're almost done. For now we'll print out the data just to see if everything is connected properly. A last bit of Xcode yelling at us because video capture needs to conform to NS objects since our delegate here is an NS object protocol. We'll override our init. Xcode should stop yelling at us and we should be all set to hit build and run. For now, it's nothing too crazy, but we'll at least see the data is making its way to the console, which means it will be ready to be used with our action classifier in the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Next time we'll put all of this together and get to the actual fun part of this project, actually using our action classifier in a real scenario. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next part. I'll see you all in the next video and until then, take care.